All right, <clears throat> so I was asked to actually do this video uh, on how I tie this bug. It's a bass bug. I call it the uh, Kicking Timmy. <laughs> There's really no reason for the name. Uh, it's I had to name it, and uh, that name came to mind. And so there it is, the Kicking Timmy. Uh, it's kind of a glorified woolly bugger, sort of, uh, with some rubber leg action going out the back. And uh, that's it. It's actually pretty easy to tie. Swims well. And now this didn't want to come out. There we go. So let me load up a hook here. There we go. Oh, let me adjust that camera a little bit. And there we go. Sorry about that. So what I have in the vise is a, a must-add worm hook, size 2 aught. Uh, you can get these on these 100 packs for super cheap uh like, like i don't know like 15 bucks for this size uh and you know they're great for doing these little bass bugs so uh the thread that i'm going to use is danville 210 and olive uh, and i've already pinched these uh little barbs down up front so i'm going to start my thread right behind those barbs I'll just get a couple wraps in. We don't need a whole lot there. This fly's pretty, pretty heavy and pretty loaded. And then I'll just take touching turns or pretty close to touching turns back to about where the bend starts, right in, yeah, right in there. And what did? Uh, well, I had some marabou lined out and the wind took it away my garage door is open the wind took it away that's all right i'll grab some more real quick so all you need is some uh, chartreuse uh marabou sorry trying to walk and chew gum at the same time here i did have two pieces pulled i don't know what the hell happened to them but that happens You can go fluffy or skinny, whatever. I'm gonna rip a bunch of this stuff off the back just so it's not in my way. There we go. I'm gonna draw it all together. You can, you know, definitely get this stuff wet if uh, you have trouble working with marabou. Here we go. All right, now now that I'm back in the game, I'm gonna put the uh, concave sides. Uh, facing one another so that I get this like bushy plume that comes out like that and I want it to be about the length of the shank or overall you can really kind of determine how you want that and I'm just gonna wrap it in three times work it around so that I'm sitting kind of on the side like this and uh, we're just going to wrap this guy forward. I'm going to just jump this thread forward. I don't even really wrap it necessarily. I just jump it forward. I'm going to take it back to where I started. And once I'm basically there, I'm going to trim all this off here. So everything's loose. You can adjust it. I'm going to lock this stuff down. And I'll start locking things down as I go back, leaving that tail loose so I can kind of adjust it as I need to. Going to the back. There we go. Something like that. You want it to encompass the uh, back end of the hook shank, though. Kind of like you do a woolly bugger. And I'm just going to come back and forth a few times and just lock all this stuff in. You can trim it out. Sorry, that is the little... This little loose piece of... Uh, Right there. You see that? It's whacking my finger, so that's the sound you're hearing. <laughs> We're just going to kind of lock it in like that. Oh boy, that is super annoying. I should have taken that off, and I didn't. Sorry. Um, so there you go. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a nice long piece. Uh, I usually pull about 10 inches or 12 inches of uh, chenille. I'm going to place it on the underside. 
right at the back. Just like so. Wrap it all in. It doesn't even really matter if it spins on you. Uh, now, what I am going to do is I'm going to keep my thread right about here where that uh, first barb to the back is. And the reason for that is so that I can add all those legs uh, and save enough room for a really bushy head. All right, there we go. And we're just going to wrap this thing forward, similar to like a jig or big woolly bugger. Guess you could add some wire to this, like some medium sized wire or something, protect it all. But uh, bass don't really have teeth, so. And that's what I'm going for here. Let's catch me some nice Kentuckys. Or whites. I'll take either one. There we go. And lock that in. Trim it out. And I'll just tie this stuff in real quick. Uh, next, what I have lined up <clears throat> is just barred legs. You can get these uh, in the fly tying packs, or you can steal them from a skirt on a jig or a spinnerbait. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to take a green and a yellow and just put them next to each other. I'm just going to load them up. I'm going to put one on top. And I'll put the extra wrap in. Uh, you'll see people do this. Uh, and you can. The only problem I found, though, uh, is when you just load it from the top like this, rotate it, and then load the next two, so on and so forth. You can do that, but like you can kind of see how that thread wants to move forward. Uh, and that's going to mess up the head. So you can kind of do that if you want, but I'm just going to put it there, put a wrap in so that these guys are sitting right on top. Uh, about half the distance out the back and the front, there's not really a methodology there. You could uh, make one longer than the other if you wanted to or whatever. It's not, uh, this is not exact science. This is a bass bug trying to trigger strikes, right? So... Uh, now I'll grab the next one, roll it up on my thread. I'll do this one on the side, put one over. I'm going to rotate the vise. I thought I had two more, and I don't have to get two more. So I'm doing uh, basically one on each side, right? One on the top, one on each side, and then one on the bottom. Right there. If these things rotate on you a little bit, it's not the end of the world. I thought I was a little more prepared than I am. That's right, I'll just grab a couple more real quick here. Uh, you could add some flash to this if you wanted to, right out the tail or whatever you want to do. It's just a bass bug. It's meant to be quick to tie. And... There we go. Let this thing squirm in the water and trigger strikes. Uh, so next what I'll kind of do to, kind of like you've seen with um, reversing deer hair or whatever, I'll just kind of take these and just lift them up a little bit and push them to the back. And uh, just kind of move them, move them around. Uh, the key here really is, and this is really the only key to the fly, <laughs> is that uh, you, you get this kind of tied up to your chenille um, so that you have room for, there we go, for your uh, hackle that's going to come into play here in just a minute. And we're just going to tie that in pretty good. Just make sure that, uh, you know, they're somewhat evenly distributed. And what happened to my clip? Jeez, I had a clip here. 
Normally I have a little uh, hair clip here that I tie everything back with and it moved on me. Alright, well. All's fair in love and fly tying. We're going to get that to the back and keep it to the back. And if i got to do something different, I'll do something different. Hackle pliers. I wonder what happened to it. It was just sitting here. I must have knocked it on the floor or something. That's fine. Just as long as that stuff's out of my way. Uh, next, what I have here is a, a chartreuse uh, saddle hackle. It's just a you know a big one, and I want to uh, pair that with a big uh, olive saddle hackle. And I've already done all the pre-work here of uh, kind of sizing them up. I've got about four inches of saddle hackle here, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to tie these in. Uh, and you can choose whichever way you want to go. I like the olive on top so that it's uh, forward. I'm just going to kind of tie this in dry fly style and just move this thing forward. And then once I get far enough up front, and I feel like I've got that locked in, I'll trim these guys out. There we go. And. I'll wrap this guy back. Uh, really, you just kind of need somewhat of a smooth base here. Um, so I kind of do this little cone-shaped base. And that really should be good enough. Now I'm going to palmer these together and draw everything to the back. Boy, I'm losing it there. I need those things out of my way. What on earth did I happen in that clip? I'm not as prepared as other videos, that's for <laughs> that's for sure. It happens though, right? It's a quick quick bass bug. That's it. Nothing fancy or schmancy here. All right, let's see if I can get these kind of locked out of my way this time. Okay, that's a little better. I only got one hanging. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw these things to the back and kind of do a double over, a double-double over. And just going to draw everything to the back as it comes around. And we're just going to work this all the way up to that thread, or just in front of that thread, or just behind that thread, depending on your terminology. Actually, it's really just behind the thread. Until I get right up in here. Uh, we just want something like the size of a woolly bugger head. I'll back my thread off until I get back to where this hackle is. I'm going to cross that over. A couple of times I'll fold everything to the back. And just start wrapping from the front back until I've captured some of that. And it's all drawing to the back, kind of like in a wet style flatter, uh, uh, flavor on a pattern. And I'm trying to combine words. Jeez. Alright, so now I'm just going to build this head. Went too far back there. Lay down where I want you. There you go. All right, now I'll come back here. I'm just kind of build up this head a little bit back here, and just kind of work it. Don't want a whole lot. Let me get rid of this here so I can see it flowing. Keep pushing to the back. It's what it wants to do. There we go. And we'll whip finish, glue it, and you're done. And that's what I call the kicking Timmy. It's just a. It's 
Just a bass bug. Nothing fancy here. Take some super glue and glue that head shut. Use UV resin or whatever you got. Uh, it's kind of meant to be somewhat of like a, if you, you think of like a, a spinner bait or something, it's got a, like a skirt on it, like a rubber skirt. Uh, it's meant to be something similar to that. Um, but following the principle, if it's not chartreuse, it ain't any use. So, there you go. That's it, the kick and Timmy. Uh, if you like the video, uh, I'd be happy if you subscribed uh, or shared the video. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, click the bell for future notifications. Uh, and you can join us over at uh, Fly Tying for Beginners on Facebook. Answer the questions. That's your golden ticket in. And, uh, yeah. The Kicking Timmy. I, boy, I stuttered there. The Kicking Timmy. <laughs> happy tying, everybody. We'll see you later.